Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will teach you the reading comprehension of unseen passage for all competitive exams with tips. So suppose your friend and you decided to play a game in which one person will tell a story and the second one has to answer the related questions asked. Firstly, your friend tells you a story and asks some questions. So, what will you try to do while listening to the story and answering the questions? You'll try to listen as carefully and as dedicatedly as possible. You'll try to find the answers from the story and not make your own assumptions. So, this is the basic idea of solving comprehension passages. So, in this video, we will learn about the comprehension of unseen passage and we'll also try solving this passage. So, without any further delay, let's get into the video. Well, let's look at the unseen passage. The election hullabaloo has meant that economic issues have taken a back seat and open public discussion about future economic policies has been relatively absent. This is surprising because even the admittedly problematic opinion polls brought out by various media organizations regularly describe economic issues such as price rise and lack of employment opportunities as major concerns at least in voters' minds. Very few of the major parties have come out with clear programs about what exactly they plan to do to address the complex set of problems currently faced by the Indian economy and those that have done so, that is such as the left party, have got minimal press coverage. But in fact, whatever new government is formed is going to face quite formidable challenges, both immediately and in the medium term. And those complex challenges are Unfortunately, ignored by both the misleadingly wishful and vague Achche Din Aenge, slogan of the major opposition party and the defensive posturing of the ruling party. The immediate problems are obvious. The mainstream media has been most concerned about the flagging rate of output growth, which is reflected in flat or declining industrial production over the previous year and decelerating exports. Declining rates of fixed investment are likely to have an impact on both infrastructure conditions and productive capacity in the coming years. Agricultural growth has recovered in the current year, but mainly because of the munificence of the 2013 monsoon underlying the agriculture's continued dependence on wayward weather conditions. This dependence is a source of concern not only in itself, but but because of prognosis of the deteriorous effects of EI Nano on the coming monsoon, which would, in turn, affect prospectus for crop production in the coming year. And it is a pointer to how, overall, the condition of cultivators in India still remains fragile. The other palpable problem is the continued high rate of inflation, particularly consumer price inflation, which has led to the situation being described as a stagflationary one, meaning decelerating output growth accompanied by relatively high inflation. It is evident that this is really cost push inflation driven by increases in fuel prices and by prices of food items. So the focus of the government should be on addressing these elements by improving conditions of agricultural supply and reducing the global impact of volatile food prices and creating a mechanism of administered fuel prices that does not expose Indian consumers, most of whom have per capita incomes that are a small fraction of the global average to high and volatile global oil prices. Yet thus far, the official response has been to treat inflation control as the sole domain of the central bank. In a peculiar and inevitably unsuccessful version of inflation targeting that causes interest rates and monetary policy to be the only policy instruments to be utilized. This blunt strategy affects investment and economic activity adversely and does not really control inflation since the cost push forces thereby deteriorate further. So the next government will have to have a more effective strategy to address inflation. So on the basis of the above passage, answer the following questions and put a take on the right options. So let's look at the question number one. Which among the following facts about most Indian political parties has been asserted by the author? Okay, so to find the correct answer of this question, you have to reread the passage. So there you have to look up for the word facts about most Indian political parties. Then you can easily find the answer of this question. 
Let's look at the options. A. They are doing everything to make India self-independent. B. They are not focusing on the economic policies. C. They are giving private sector more freedom. D. They have a very bright vision for India. And E. They are engaged in malpractices. So, after reading the passage carefully, you will come to know that the answer is A. That is, they are doing everything to make India self-dependent. Let's look at the second question. Which of the following statement is false regarding India's agricultural sector? So now to find the correct answer of this question. So you have to look up for the word in the passage that is India's agricultural sector. Then you can find the correct answer. A. It largely depends on weather conditions. B. Ea and Eno would affect crop production in coming year. C. Monsoon of 2013 prevented agriculture to recover in the current year. D. Condition of cultivators is still fragile in India and E. The prospect of crop production in coming year is not bright. So after reading the passage carefully, you will come to know that the answer is C. That is the monsoon of 2013 prevented agriculture to recover in the current year. Let's look at the third question. What is stagflation as per the passage? In this question, you have to look up for the word stagflation in the passage. Let's look at the options A. Higher output growth with high inflation B. Higher inflation with lower output growth and C. Lower output growth with high inflation So, the answer is B. Higher inflation with lower output growth Let's look at the fourth question Which of the following options is or are true in regard to the strategies used by RBI to control inflation as per the passage? So, to find the correct answer of this question, you have to reread the passage and you have to look up for the word that is the strategies used by RBI to control inflation. A. RBI considers controlling inflation as its sole domain. B. RBI incorporates interest rates and monetary policy as its only policy instruments to control inflation. C. RBI's policy action lead to further deterioration of cost push forces. Then D. RBI strategies affect investment and economic activity negatively and E all of the above. So the answer is E that is all of the above. Let's look at the fifth question. Which among the following options is or are true regarding the employment generation in India as per the passage? So to find the correct answer of this question, you have to look up for the word employment generation in India. Let's look at the options A. The growing number of labor forces in India B. Employment generation schemes undertaken by the Indian Ministry is influenced by the state cooperatives C. Employment generation policies do not have an immediate effect in India D. There is a scarcity of informal activities in India and E. All of the above So the answer is C. Employment generation policies do not have an immediate effect in India Let's look at the sixth question. Which of the following is farthest in meaning to formidable as used in the passage? So to find the correct answer of this question, you have to look up for the word formidable in the passage. Let's look at the options A. Horrible B. Feeble C. Alarming D. Impregnable and E. Appalling So the correct answer is B. Feeble Let's look at the seventh question. Which of the following is farthest in meaning to fragile as used in the passage? So to find the correct answer of this question, you have to look up for the word fragile in the passage. Let's look at the options A. Robust B. Tenuous C. Fatal D. Liberal and E. Insignificant So the correct answer is robust. Let's look at the eighth question. Which of the following is farthest in meaning to deleterious as used in the passage? So, to find the correct answer of this question, you have to look up for the word deleterious in the passage. Let's look at the options A. Baleful B. Geopardizing C. Favorable D. Pernicious and E. Noxious So, the correct answer is C. Favorable Let's look at the ninth question. Which of the following is closest in meaning to palpable as used in the passage? 
So to find the correct answer of this question, you have to look up for the word palpable used in the passage. Let's look at the options. A. Concealed. B. Apparent. C. Obvious. D. Ambiguous. And E. Disguised. So the correct answer is C. Obvious. Let's look at a last question. Which of the following is closest in meaning to dire as used in the passage? To find the correct answer of this question, you have to look up for the word dire in the passage. Let's look at the options. A. Customary. B. Abject. C. Terrifying. D. Ridiculing. And E. Favorable. So the correct answer is C. That is terrifying. So now I'll give you some quick tips and tricks how you can find out the answers very quickly. Small tips and tricks to remember. First, every time you read something, do not ignore an unknown word to find its meaning immediately. Second, this will help you a lot to learn new words but don't forget to use them in your day-to-day -day conversations whenever possible. In this way, keep working on your vocabulary without stopping. Third, reading is a fundamental part of everyday life. The more you incorporate and prioritize reading and understanding what you read, the better your overall reading comprehension will become. And this tip can help you make the most of your time when practicing your reading skills. Fourth, eliminate distractions. When you're distracted, your ability to comprehend what you're reading is negatively impacted. So when reading, even if it's a simple email, Eliminate distractions and focus only solely in the text. This will help you learn to hold your attention to what you read and enable you to know whether you understand what you are reading. Next, read a book below your reading level. Starting with books below your reading level will allow you to develop a baseline of your reading comprehension and build on that. Instead of starting with books or other texts that you find challenging, read something that is comfortable and that you can easily comprehend. You can take an online quiz to establish the reading level you are currently at. The next point, reread text to ensure understanding. If you finish a sentence or paragraph and realize that you don't understand what it was trying to convey, take the time to reread it until you do. Try to read more slowly the second time around and look up definitions for any other words you don't know the meaning of. Then last point, read aloud. Reading aloud incorporates both visual and audio learning into your reading comprehension practice. It also forces you to slow down and gives you more time to process what you are reading. So if you follow all these steps, you will surely score very good marks in your comprehension exam. So don't forget to follow the steps and tricks. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this English lesson series and learned a lot. So you can continue studying with me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.